Welcome to Math with Professor V. Here's your latest integral of the day. And yes, we have another improper integral. That's the theme of the week. So we have integral from negative infinity to negative one half of three to the x over one plus nine raised to the x dx. All right, so first things first, we need to rewrite this improper integral, replacing the lower limit of negative infinity with some sort of dummy variable, usually we use t or the like, and we'll rewrite it as the limit as t approaches negative infinity now. So let me do that first before I get distracted trying to solve things, you know? So we have limit, t goes to negative infinity, integral t to negative one half, and then we have three to the x over one plus nine raised to the x dx. Okay, then from here, Let's just rewrite nine to the x using our properties of exponents. So if you'll recall, nine to the x is the same as three squared raised to the x. I can multiply two and x, so then this is the same as three to the two x. And then now I can just kind of interchange where the two and the x were for my purposes and rewrite this as three to the x squared, okay? So because when you raise a power to another power, you multiply those exponents, you can basically just swap where they are. But I did wanna show you this step. That's helpful because hopefully now you can see we can make a substitution. So we've got limit, t goes to negative infinity, integral t to negative one half, three to the x over one plus three to the x squared dx. Do you see? We're gonna make a u substitution now and I'm gonna let u be three to the x. So what's the derivative of three to the x? Maybe we don't practice this one as much as e to the x, so it's three to the x times ln of three, and then we have dx over here, getting ready for the u sub. So this works out nicely because we have that three to the x up top, right? That means one over ln of three du is dx, and then also we need to change those limits of integration. So look right now, t and negative one half belong to the variable of this integral. That variable is x. So I'm gonna substitute them in for x and see what my new limits are in terms of u. So u of the lower limit t is just gonna be three to the t. And then u of negative one half, that's gonna be three to the negative one half. That's one over rad three, but I'll just leave it like this for now, okay? It's that for a reason, don't worry. Things will turn out beautifully in a moment. So we've got limit t goes to negative infinity, three to the t, three to the negative one half. I have one over ln of three. And then all of this is also du now, over one plus u squared. Are you all right? The worst is over, I promise. Look, look, look. So this is just a constant. We should all know by now, antiderivative of one over one plus u squared? Yes, it's our good friend, tan inverse of u. Okay, so keep this limit the whole time until you evaluate it. Limit t goes to negative infinity, one over ln of three. And then we've got tan inverse of u evaluated from three to the t, to three to the negative one half, okay? Let me just keep the constant outside, right? I can evaluate tan inverse of u at these limits and then multiply by the constant after. No need to make it messy the whole way through. Okay, so here we go, let's focus. Limit, t goes to negative infinity, one over natural log of three. Then we have here tan inverse of three to the negative one half, which now I'll write it as one over rad three, minus tan inverse of three to the t. Okay, beautiful. So let's see what's going on here. This is just a constant, that's fine. Tan inverse of one over rad three, think to yourself, at what angle, right? is tangent equal to one over rad three. And I always remind myself tangent is the ratio of sine over cosine. So when is sine one half and cosine rad three over two? Why that's at pi over six. And then now we just gotta evaluate this limit here. So I would do it maybe off to the side so we can think it through. 
So we need the limit as t approaches negative infinity of 10 inverse of 3 to the t. Now, we have a theorem that tells us that as long as this function is continuous, we can pass the limit inside to the argument. So I'm going to do just that. It looks kind of like you're, they're swapping places. And you don't need to write this step. Sometimes we just do it mentally, but I just want to explain to you what's going on. So I'm going to evaluate the limit of the inside function of the composition. And then once I have that limit, I'll apply tan inverse to it. Does that make sense? Okay, so here we have t approaching negative infinity. Where is 3 to the t going? Well, if the exponent's getting very, very large in the negative direction, then this whole quantity is approaching 0. Hopefully that's clear. If you think about your exponential functions, right? 3 to the t exponential functions with base bigger than 1. I'll say that's t, yeah. Uh, they'll go through 0, 1 increase this way and then they have horizontal asymptote in the negative x direction negative t direction in this case so this quantity right here this is approaching zero that's right now do we know what tan inverse of zero is hopefully yes the graph of tan inverse pops in your head or you just think when is tangent zero when theta or my angle is zero okay so then this is zero Beautiful. So I just have 1 over ln of 3 times pi over 6, and that's it. So how should we write it? Pi, oh, that's the ugliest pi I've written in my life. Pi over 6 ln 3. That looks better. Okay, now, what do I care about this number or the value of the limit? Not a whole lot. Just the fact that it's finite, right, that this limit exists as a finite number tells me my improper integral is convergent. Okay, so that's it for this one. I hope you enjoyed this integral. I thought it was nice because so often we work with taking the derivative of e to the x or e to the t, and I thought it was useful to remember what our differentiation rules are when we have a base other than e. I'll just remind you right now one more time. If you take the derivative of a to the x, it's a to the x times natural log of a. Don't forget that one. All right, that's it. If you enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you solved it differently, let me know. And if you need more help with improper integrals or even the comparison theorem for improper integrals, I have more video lectures all linked in the description, so be sure to check them out. Also, follow me on Instagram, TikTok, and I'll be back with more content for you soon. Bye!